Welcome to our 2022 Avenger 28 QB SLE. Start right in the back here, you get your power cord inlet. So as you pop this open, you're gonna find a little notch in the top right corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. Press those in together, for little eighth turn to lock it down, and you get the thread collar in back there, properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites will have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Right in the end of your bumper here, you just pull it, reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's probably hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're going to find the stabilizer jack. What they do is they just run down and contact the ground. Give it another turn or so just to firm it up and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. Up from there is your cable inlet, coax cable will plug into there, fire up at your TV location. A couple of steps down the side of the unit, you'll find your sewer system here. So you just kind of press on that cap and give it a turn, pop it out of there. You see it's got the same ears that your sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it in, turn it until it locks into place. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet, so it's first going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically, cleaner water. We'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Door to the front of the unit. You get your water inlets here. Just the one on top is your fresh water inlet. You just take your water hose and plug it into there. Turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. Once that tank's full, you're gonna see some water spit out of that vent back there. Here's the drain for that tank as well. Just open that up, it drains itself out. Below that inlet is the city water connection. Same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the line throughout the unit. Storage compartment here flips on open. You get that finger on the left side there to hold it open. You get your water hose in here. Inside of that water hose, you find your park adapter. 30 amp into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Does see straight through to the other side and is also accessible from underneath the front bed. Coming to the front of the unit, you get this little solar panel inlet right there. It's just a little two-prong plug to plug into that, charges your batteries. Battery itself is housed inside of this box right here, so as long as you're plugged in through a short cord in the back, or your seven-pin to your tow vehicle, the battery's charging for you. Underneath these covers is your propane tanks. So you can see our arrows pointing over here, so we're running off of this tank, so we'll just reach in and be back. Get that nut, uh, valve there, just turn that open. Now if that were to go red while well, you got that tank open, it's just letting you know it's now empty. At that point, you just close it off, flip the change over, over, run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. Other end of your storage compartments here. Inside here, you're going to find this little jack. So that's going to run into all your stabilizers. Just run them up and down. Little T-latch here. You just clip into your door, just holds it open for you. And you get your little bottle opener right beside the door as well. Hot water tank here, you're just going to take that keyway, line it up, and it'll pop on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside of the unit. Before turning it on, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. You should get that water coming out. If you're not getting any water of that coming out, there is a chance that it's empty. And of course, you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure it's uh, filled up before you go firing it up. Once you're done, just lock it with the keyway. GFI protected outlet, exhaust for your furnace. If you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Straight up from there is your stove vent. So if you're ever running your stove, it is of course putting off fumes. So you just wanna make sure this flap here is opened up and your fan inside turned on to evacuate said fumes. Once you're done, just kind of press it into place and it'll hear it click. Okay, and that'll prevent any dust from kicking up in there while you're out traveling. Marked by this sticker, we get your low point drains. So they're kind of right up underneath the skirt here. You just open that up, allows the water system to drain itself out. So if you're leaving the unit for a while, you can just drain it all, all out before your, uh, your water goes stale or stagnant. A little leash tie down right here so you've got the dog with you you can tie him down and then in the back of the unit you get your spare tire as well as that pre-installed on-the-go ladder receiver so now we'll make our way inside the unit your door here just opens on up steps you just grab that front handle pull it straight out flip that last step over and step on in as we come inside, first things first, right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher. That's standard, pull the pin, point, and shoot. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, those two screws there, you can pop those out of the way. You'll find your water pump as well as your hot water tank right back there. Straight up the wall, we get your light switches. So one on the right here, there's your one interior light. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just kind of on their own center push buttons there. So we'll kind of turn those on as we go. Light switch on the left, does your awning light outside. Your awning is on this switch here. Press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually line itself up backwards, in which case your fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So 
So there's a the flat. I don't know if we can get much further out though. So we'll stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear. I'm just going to pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. I have to like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the rest of bending them. Then we'll press and hold the track. That awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric stays over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with drowning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Slide out is on that switch on the left there. Press and hold out, the side will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're gonna hear some clicks from the motors letting us know they've reached their stall. So into the front bedroom. As you come into here, your light switch again, just on its own center switch. You get some closet space on the side there, open storage across the top. Pick up the foot of your bed, you can get access to your front storage compartments. The sliding door just has a travel latch back here, so you just wanna pull that up and then you can slide your door. TV backer right here, cable and satellite outlet, as well as your power outlet. You are also pre-wired for Wi-Fi. Another closet space here. Right in the head of the bed is a little light. Again, center push button. This window right behind me is your emergency exit. So you pull this red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. Your entertainment area here. So again, TV backers just right there. You get your AV cables that are hooked into your stereo so you can kind of get that surround sound. Cable and satellite outlet, or sorry, antenna outlet for it. Turning that antenna on, just that button right there, you get that little green light letting you know that it's turned on. It will also help clear up your stereo signal. Stereo is pretty straightforward there. Power button is also your mute, so if you press it, it's just going to mute it. Press and hold to turn it off. Zone one's your inside set, zone two's your outside set. Open storage across the bottom. In the slide, again, lights, all just on center push buttons. The light above your dinette, its button is just on the side there. Dinette you can see is currently set up as the dinette. You can take your table here, wiggle it up and out of its legs. The legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The tabletop will then sit onto these two ledges there. Take your back cushions, fill in the middle, creates your bed. The couch here, the centerpiece does fold down and get a couple of cup holders there. You can also flip it up and right down, make your other bed. In the kitchen, your storage right up top here, you're going to find that binder. It's got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, anything like that, you'll find right in there. Right above the counter is a little light. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. And a little bit of storage down underneath it. Right, as well as your drawer space. Microwave, pretty standard, just like home. Down underneath it, you have your range vent, the light, and the fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. Five-fold cover just flips on back and turn that knob in, turn it up to high. You can see that your ignition's automatic. Once you're done, just turning them all off, letting the grill turn down, closing it back up. For the oven, you're going to press oven there. That'll turn on the light. Then you can take the knob on the right here, turn it over to that little flame. Then you have automatic ignition at the back there for your pilot light. Once you have it going, you can come here, select your temperature. So we'll just go to 300 for now. And then we'll hear a click in a second here. And she fires up. Once you're done, you can just turn it off and that'll turn it all off. Then just press oven again to turn off that light. Down underneath, you get the return air for your furnace. You just kind of want to make sure it's not blocked off. Beside it is your power converter. So you're just gonna press it top and center and you get all of your breakers down the center here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. 
LP detector beside it. It's a propane sensor in there. Sits on the floor. This guy detects it. Starts going off like a smoke detector would. 12 volt fridge here. So as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Smoke detector is kind of right behind us here. Into the bathroom. Light switch is just on the right there. Toilet flips on open. You get your flusher front and center. Hot water tank control here. So you just turn that switch on. You get that little red light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's going to go out. It's going to try that three times. If after the third try it doesn't fire up, this light's going to come on and stay on. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Down underneath it's your monitor panel. It's your water pumps in the bottom corner there. You turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor system's up top, so battery here, you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, goes to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray tanks. GFI protected outlet, test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. And a little bit of storage down underneath it. In the shower, standard head and hose, hot and cold water course. And then right above my head here, we've got your roof vent. You're just turning that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get the switch for the fan. And right outside the bathroom is your thermostat. So you press mode there and that'll cycle it through so you can see we're off right now. And then it comes in the fan. You select your fan speed, that's low and that's high, right? So fan is of course just moving some air around, there's no cooling involved there. Hit mode again after that, it'll come up into cool, and you can select your auto fan, or low and high, just whatever you like, right? With the air conditioner going, you've got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you can open it up, and it just dumps all this air in the living room here. When you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this air as quickly as possible, then you can close it off, start moving the air throughout. Mode again after cool, it'll come into furnace. The temp selection at any point is just selected right there. Turns off the air conditioner, turns on your furnace. Furnace is moving its air through its floor registers. Mode again after heat, comes down into off, and then just cycles back around. Some pantry space here. And then into the back bunk room. Your lights again, just center push buttons. Same emergency exit that you had in the front bedroom. Cable and satellite outlet, as well as a power outlet. So your TV would be mounted right there. Closet space. And then in the bunks, it's just got their own lights. Simple as that. Yeah. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204 237 7272.